Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Two dice, A and B, are numbered 1 to 6. But each dice is unfair. The numbers 1 to 6 do not all show with equal chance. If you roll the two dice, their sum will be a whole number from 2 to 12. Prove it is impossible that all of the sums can occur with equal chance. I saw this interesting problem on Math Stack Exchange. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. We can solve this problem with a proof by contradiction. Suppose dice A has probabilities of P1 to P6 for its faces 1 to 6. Similarly, suppose that dice B has probabilities of Q1 to Q6. Each probability is a non-negative number that does not exceed 1. Now let's suppose that all of the sums do occur with equal chance. That will mean a probability of 1 over 11 to each of the 11 possible sums from 2 to 12. Now what's the probability that we will have a sum that's equal to 2? There's only one way that we can get a sum of 2, which is 1 plus 1. So the probability will be P1 multiplied by Q1, and we know that each of the sums has a probability of 1 over 11. So P1 Q1 is equal to 1 over 11. Similarly, there's only one way to get a sum of 12, which is 6 plus 6. So we have P6 Q6 is equal to 1 over 11. Now what about a sum of 7? There are many different ways that we can get a sum of 7, and the sum of all of these probabilities is equal to 1 over 11. Now each of these probabilities is a non-negative number, so if we remove these terms, we are possibly removing some non-negative numbers here. So this will result in an inequality. We have P1Q6 plus P6Q1 is less than or equal to 1 over 11. Now, since P1Q1 is equal to 1 over 11, neither of the probabilities is equal to 0. And similarly, P6 times Q6 is equal to 1 over 11. So P6 and Q6 are also not equal to 0. So let's focus on a couple of these things we've derived. Since we know that P1 and Q6 are not equal to 0, this must be a positive term, P1 multiplied by Q6. Similarly, P6 multiplied by Q1 must also be a positive term because neither is equal to 0. This means that P1 Q6 is less than 1 over 11, and P6 Q1 is also less than 1 over 11. So now let's further continue our analysis. Considering the first equation and this first inequality, we can conclude that P1 Q6 is less than P1 Q1. Considering this pair, we must have that P6 Q1 is less than P1 Q1. From here, we will have that P6 Q1 is less than P6 Q6. And finally, we have that P1 Q6 is less than P6 Q6. Since we know that none of these probabilities is equal to zero, and each of the probabilities is a non-negative number not exceeding one, we can cancel out these probabilities on these inequalities. In the first inequality, we can cancel out P1 from both sides, giving that Q6 is less than Q1. In the next inequality, we can cancel out Q1 from both sides, giving P6 is less than P1. In the third inequality, we can cancel out P6, which gives that Q1 is less than Q6. And in the final inequality, we can cancel out Q6, leaving the inequality that P1 is less than P6. But wait a minute! We've derived that Q6 is less than Q1, and we've also derived that Q1 is less than Q6. This is a contradiction. Similarly, we've derived that P6 is less than P1, and the reverse. Therefore, we've derived a contradiction, and it is not possible 
that all of these sums occur with equal chance. And that concludes the proof. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.